All right, all right. Look, I, I, I know you've all just got your double models and suddenly I see you doing all the exact same things that us, you know, pro subscribers did when it first came out using those damn stacked model APRs. Just stop, stop. They're not good. Stop using them. Anyway, in this tips and tricks video, I will be mostly focusing on how you layer two models on top of each other and using them to stack gear and layer things and clip things together. But there will also be one or two tips for separate models as well. So if you're new to this, you may be asking, you know, what's the point? This just seems like a modeled annoying mess to deal with and just makes models look like clippy messes. Well, the reason why we do this is because it kind of allows for new types of customization, which are otherwise unavailable on HeroForge. And I, I will show you why, but more importantly, I will show you how. So instead of these pre-made APRs with two models that are already pulled together with some specific pose that you're no, never going to be able to edit whatsoever, just it's very simple to pull two models together, okay? You have your model, you finish the model, you finish the posing. Now it's very important that you finish the posing before you clip the models together, but let's say this is the finished model you want. Then you click stage, you click beta, you click import here, and then it will get, throw you to your folders. If you don't have pro, you will only have one big folder here. You pull the same model, the same model that you came from, the click, you click this, and then you import down here. And now, boom, you have two of them. Now you will see that the character spun slightly on the base, but that doesn't really matter. So we're going to pull this character to the middle. He's going to be pushed to the side because we're going to want to make space for the new model. So we pull the main model back. You can see which model is the main by this arrow here that will show. And if you click up here, main to extra, now the arrow swaps here. That means you've selected the extra model, but we go back to the main. So we position the main model on the middle of the base again. Then we go to the extra model. Now, you're going to see the twist here. This model, if I pull this together now, obviously this doesn't work. This is a mess. So we go back and then we are going to go down to the twist here. That For some reason, the extra model is always on 17 while the main model is on 0. So you go to the extra model, you twist it down to 0. Now, if you don't have Pro, you won't see the numerical slider inputs, but you can still, if you click this arrow, you will see the numbers. So once the extra model is on 0, then you need to pull them together. Now, it doesn't matter how complicated your pose is. Pulling two models together is not difficult and you don't even need to fold specific numbers. You just drag them together like this until it looks right. And it can be a little bit fiddly, figuring out exactly where is right. But generally, like, it's not as much like... Like, this is probably the closest we'll get, right? And the, a, a good way, Hypersmurf recommended this when we were talking about these tips. He recommended if you don't know if you're exactly right, then try turning the twists like try pulling this just a tiny bit to the right or the left and if it looks worse then you know it's messed up you can look at the eyes you can look at the the uh, the ears and you, you will see that this is about as close as it gets like you can't really notice where the line goes between the two models actually if you look really closely here on the thumb you can see it but it's barely noticeable and it won't matter once the clothing is on now before i go on it is very important again that you finished all of the posing before you pull the models together. It's very annoying. Like if I decide that I actually I want this character's head to be, you know, turned like this and all high and mighty, then suddenly I need to twist the other the, the extra model's head. Now I well it's the main one, but you need to pull the other model's head around and figure out exactly where it was and sync them up again. This is why generally it's way easier to finish all of the posing before you import the duplicate character, which you then continue to screw around on. Now, some small side note before I go on with the tips. Uh, the extra model counts as an extra. Like I said, to import, you're going to stage an extra and then one. That means that now you can only have one other extra item on the base, whereas usually you can have two. So well, you can no longer decorate the base as much, but also you can remove the extra model by just clicking the trash can here on the extra, boom. Now the extra model is gone and we only have the main model. Another thing worth noting is um, you cannot be on a mount. You cannot use a ride once there, there is two models. They might be changing this in the future, but for the time being, you cannot use a chair or a mount or anything like that once you have two models. Finally, uh, it's worth noting that the main model and the extra models have two different color mixers. So, for example, if I color this like this, you, you see, you can see where the lines go between the extra model. The main model is going to have the red, but the extra model is not, because I only color the main model. And uh, there are a few bugs surrounding these color things, but I'm not going to go over all of them here because that's just advanced stuff and it won't really bother you that much anyway. So there you go. You have your two stacked models, so you can now do a double of everything, alright? You can have tails on two different bodies, meaning you can have in total 
18 tails if you want to so if we enable all of these and we pull them all around now you can have 50 million tails on the model all over the place you get the point you can have two pairs of wings so as you see we have these these main model wings here or the extra model wings rather and then on the main model we have these extra wings back here meaning we have four wings in total and the same thing goes for the horns we have like we, we, we have all the all the horn options are suddenly doubled so we can have so many more than usual we can have double beards like this one you see this we have the we have basically created the walter white beard see we we put on the chin goatee on one model and the biker stash on the other and then you see one mustache and then one chin beard and boom it's jesse we have to cook and of course it would be a shame not to mention the stacked hairstyles and there's so many of them so right now both models have this hairstyle right but if i just swap one of them to the swept back hair boom now we have a you know much more complicated hairstyle at the same time or you know we could put on the dashing hair on one model and we could put on the uh we could have put on the french twist on the other one and we get this kind of weird combination i mean there's so many different hairstyles you can stack you could put on the the shaggy hair on one model and the the really long wavy hair on another yeah this one and now again you get this fringe bit that's usually not present there with the main model and it also just looks more detailed in general right so it looks more like hair you can combine the two zombie hairstyles the patchy hair for example uh patchy hair and the patchy short hair and boom now we have you know both of them combined you still get this bald spot here but that's easy to cover up with some horns especially when you have double horns if you want to use the uh, the long undercut hairstyle like this one, then you can go on the other model. Say you don't like, because you usually right, this hairstyle has a bald side here, but boom, you put on, you know, anything else like here on the side and it will cover it up. That one's a bit bad, but uh, like this, this one could work. Now you have a proper Vi hairstyle here from Vi, I fucking love Arcane XD. I mean, the same thing goes for the undercut. You can put on the undercut and then another hairstyle underneath and suddenly it doesn't look quite as silly with the bald sides anymore. You know, you, 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 you get the point. But ah, oh, see, I just suddenly realized that I think it looks kind of silly that this character is just covered with the stage border color. So what if I want him to have some uh, some skin color? Oh, oh shit. Oh no, oh no, what is going on? Oh, maybe I should have thought of doing that before I put the two models together. Damn, see? I, I screwed up already, and this is the kind of thing you want to avoid. Always finish the models, put on the decals, everything. Proportions, posing, measurements, everything has to be done before you pull the models together. That is absolutely the most important thing. Now, here comes the biggest and most useful tip. You know, the thing that people generally really want layering for. And that is how you stack clothing. Now, before layered clothing especially, this used to be very sought after. Because, you know, then you would you didn't have two different types of leggings. So it would be really hard to, to get what you really wanted. But, you know, let's make it simple and just start with chest pieces. So I'm going to slap on these, these things for the lower body so that it doesn't... So that we don't have to care too much about it, basically. Now, let's have a look at chest pieces. So, let's say you're like me and you think that the Knight Banneret tunic looks really cool. But then you think that this part of the chest piece looks really, a little bit too slim. But you, you don't feel like anything on the upper model here will really hide this. So, what can we do about that? We can go into the extra model and in the same, very same layer, we can slap on something else to replace that specific area of it, you know? Let's say we want to combine the dashing duelist duble with the night banner tunic. Now you'll immediately see there's a lot of clipping here. So what can we do about that? We can change all the measurements. So let's for, we we want the the dashing duelist chest piece to show more. So we can start by uppering the size of the upper body a little bit like this, and we can also pull out the belly slightly, like the 30, 40 or so. And we can pull up the bust as well and then simultaneously we can go on to the other model and we can pull down the bust and pull in the waist and now we've effectively removed most signs of the knight banner tuning from the chest piece but we've kept the arms and if we want to bring even more emphasis to the knight banner at arms then we can now increase the size of those arms just slightly because we don't want it to look crazy and we can then pull down the arm size on the other one to make them disappear so now we effectively got the best of both worlds. We've got the shoulders and the arms of the Knight Banner tunic with the chest piece of the Dashing Duelist Duble. And you know, there will be some clipping, you can see some here, and it becomes even more noticeable later with color, and especially here, there's a lot of clipping. But like, you can hide these things and you can overlook them. Like, you can, you can pull cloaks over this, you can be creative with your coloring, there are ways around all these things. 
But really what this all comes down to is learning how to use the sliders efficiently and learning what items will impact other items in certain ways. For example, so we, we really like these Knight Banneret uh, arms, right? But if, And then if we if we wanted to put on some plate gloves, you know, the Demigauntless, then you'll see they kind of squish these arms down. And now technically you can do this by just stacking arms on top of each other. You don't need double model for this. But here we can use the double model to instead put those gloves on the extra model. There they are. And now, because they're on the extra model, they no longer show. And you can kind of see that the other glove is clipping here, and that's why we can just go into that one, and we put on something that's really simple and easy to hide, like the main plain gloves. Boom. And now you barely notice the difference, and we get everything we want. Now, there's really no end to the amount of combinations you can do. I mean, like, I, I, I know that a, a, a common favorite of the community has always been this fur and leather tundra coat tunic thing because of this fur color, but then you don't really like the arms or the chest piece, so you want to hide the chest piece. And now, I mean, we've already kind of hidden the chest piece. Like, you could use the dashing duelist thing, or you could use this one, or you could use this or whatever. And then, of course, you need to make those pesky arms go away, so you increase the size of the, of the other tunic's arms, and you lower the size of the arms from the fur thunder coat and so suddenly you, you no longer see the fur thunder coat aside from this cool fur color here and it's like there's so many combinations like these it's it's impossible for me to like ravel them all up i mean again this is just one example but really what it comes down to is you need to learn how to use these measurement sliders and like you don't always need to up the upper size body i mean you can see i've pulled it back down now made the character more slim and it still doesn't really clip so like you, you just gotta you gotta learn to use the sliders and also you gotta learn to use the items underneath the sliders because sometimes having items underneath will make one of these chest pieces bigger but that's mostly with the old ones and of course this is far from the only color that you can you can use i mean if i go into the same secondary model and i slap on the slim jacket with accents suddenly we get this huge evil you know color here instead and we don't it doesn't have to be the, the, the disciple of death tunic down here i mean i could slap on this and we would still have the same color i could slap on this and now, <laughs> well, now we have two colors you know the the, the, the point is Whichever chess piece you're using, being able to stack them like this is gonna give you infinitely more customization than anything you had beforehand. I mean, look at this. Like, And of course, it would be absolutely shameful of me not to mention helmet stacking. Now, this this, this is where it really gets juicy. I mean, let's just let's just start with a few simple ones. So we slap on the, the, the Conquistador helmet. Now you'll see the clipping hair underneath there. But let's see, we can combine that with this and we get a cool face guard. We can... We can combine it with this, we get another cool face card, we can combine it with this, we get a gas mask, we, you, you know, you, do, do, do you see the point here? Like, there, there's no ad limit to the combinations, and currently we're only do, just doing one type of helmet, I mean. And also, when it comes to helmets, uh, like, for you see this, right? We've combined a helmet with a hood, this is a classic example, but the hood is a bit too small, so there's clipping going on, and that's why we raise the size of the hood, like this. Like, so, again, toying around with measurements to reduce clipping, just like with the chest piece, is what you gotta do with all things double model if you wanna make this clipping look decent. So what about boots? I mean, look, uh, a beginner mistake that people do a lot when they mess around with double models is they just think that, like, oh, I, I, I need to clip every piece, everything needs to have, like, double model stuff, I need to have two different types of skirts, you know, we're gonna slap on this, this upper skirt, and then we're also gonna have this one. Now we have two skirts here, and then we're gonna have four pairs of pants and 50 different boots. Like, nah, it, it's generally, boots don't look that great stacked. There's not a lot of great combinations. Like, let's say we have these boots on the main model, and you're like, oh, but I want more detail. So you decide, you know, to slap on these boots at the same time. Like, sure, fine, but now you've just got, like, you basically hid the previous boots anyway, and it just look you can see the clipping here, so it's unnecessary. You could slap on the sandals, but it will barely show unless you pull out the, the leg measurements. You know, like the, there's there's not really much point. Like you could do this, sure, that, like that's that's fine, but that's only really if you have a character where that makes sense. So again, don't go overboard. You don't have to double model everything. You can satisfy yourself with just double modeling the chest piece and maybe the head piece, and you know that's it. You know, you don't have to go overboard with every single model you do. So let's toy around a little bit with a model that's actually finished. Now this was designed to be a single model. It was never intended to be stacked, but let's quickly put these together and see what we can do. Two tips regarding the face that I was always quite proud of discovering myself uh, was the the eyes and the mixing of faces. So we're, we're, we have the extra model selected right now. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the eyes altogether because you know you have two pairs of eyes stacked here and then on this extra model again now we, we, we don't have any eyes selected here right? So now if we go into eyelid posing and we just 
you see how we can twist this down so we can now make it look like a character has actually closed their eyes in her voice. Now, this is not something you can normally do. Now, it's a little bit glitchy. I mean, you can see the eyeball there still. But if we just color the little bit that's left with, you know, the, the skin color here, like we, we color this like this and this like this. And now, boom, suddenly... You have closed eyes in Hereforge, like properly closed eyes, not just painted eyeballs. Now again, on the extra model once more, another thing we can do is we can stack faces. Now this only works with some, so I'll show you one of my favorite examples here. We have the heroic face on both of them right now, but if we go into the extra model and we slap on the gaunt features, now what you'll see is on this side, because the, model, the models are never perfectly synced into each other. They're just synced to a point where you can't really tell the difference. So you can see which side has the, the like it's leaning towards now. Like the extra model is more in this direction and the main model is more in this direction. But because of the gaunt features, if we now go into face posing and we pull up the angry here, you can kind of see how it starts to clip. Now, the dead giveaway is the little like mustache here but if we just color that as though it's skin real quick like this then you barely notice that anymore and suddenly it looks like you have a character who's angry even though they haven't properly opened their mouth because you know usually if you pull up the snarl in Hereforge boom like the, the character is just pissed but now we can actually have a closed mouth angry character because of the stacking of faces and I agree you know it's not perfect it does look a bit cursed and the, the closer you zoom in the sillier it looks but you can pull this off really well if you go into the main model and you select in species you go down to where is it centaur I'm just gonna google centaur you make one of the models a centaur now you see you cannot have a ride like a horse or whatever with two models but you can have a centaur you can make them different species and now this was a trick by discovered by hyper smurf who told me about this and basically what we do is we can pull these models as far apart as possible like this and twist them around this way and now we can post them against one another and then if i now go back and i turn this model from a centaur into a human again boom they are now posed further out on the base than they ever could have been normally and now obviously this is very good if you want to have like two characters swinging a sword at each other Like, let's say you really wanted a rapier duel or whatever between two characters, then you, you need the space. Like, this, it may be buggy, and yeah, it's, you're probably not going to be able to print this, but the point is, they, you need to use this Hyper Smurf trick if you really want to space two characters out on a base, and it's it's really the only way to do it. So, again, the Centaur glitch, you don't need Pro for that, It's you don't need to import, you just do it. Now, instead of showing you all, all of this on, on top of this, you know, silly model, I'm going to do one big example model now, where I'm going to be utilizing all of these tricks, and I'm going to be going over step by step so uh, but i'll be doing it fairly quickly because you've already seen all the tips so here we go so the example model we're going to be do doing here is something quite simple i'm going to be doing like a, I'll, I'll probably decide exactly what it'll be like halfway through but for now i'm just going to decide on something like i want to do a sleepy soldier so before anything else we are going to color the actual model right like we're gonna finish the skin finish the base you know put on gear all of that stuff decals everything like that goes on before we pull the models together. There we go, we've finished some base decaling, now we're going to sort out the pose and also sort out the uh, the actual body measurements. Now it can be useful to keep muscularity like and not too high because muscularity will mesh mess with a lot of the clothing measurements, so just keep it at 50 if you want to go easy mode. Again, as I went over in my posing guide, pulling the clavicles down a lot if you want to make a really relaxed pose is a, is a good shout. Right, so now 
right about now you might be thinking, okay, well the pose is uh, mostly finished, you know, it, maybe it's time to pull the two models together now, but no, I would not recommend that. I would actually recommend that you mostly, like, put the gear and the clothes and everything on the, on the character as well before you finish, because otherwise coloring will be a nightmare. Now we might have something where we can actually start pulling the two models together because now we, we, we finished all the basics, you know, like everything else that we do on from here on will not be hampered by us having two models like shoulder pads, for example, if you want to stack shoulder pads and, you know, we're going to be wanting to do that after we put the two models together anyway. So with everything colored, we've got the base model finished and now we can pull the two models together. So as before, we go into stage, we click extra, we click beta, and boom, we pull this character together. And now, as I described before, we're going to pull the main model into the center of the stage. Then we're going to grab the extra model, we're going to twist it to zero, and just like that. Now, this time we have a proper model, so we pull it back until the ear is here, like this. And yeah, you can tell it's a little bit too far to the left, so we're going to pull it one step like this. We look at the ear again, yeah, it's a little bit too far forward, so we pull it back, and boom. Now that should be it. So, with the extra model selected, I'm immediately going to rem remove the eyes, and as you can see, the eyes are going to go a little bit deeper now, and now we're going to pull down the eyelids like this, because again, we wanted this car to look tired, I've kind of tried to convey that in the in the pose as well. So we're going to lower these eyes a little bit like this, and there we go, now we have that half-open face uh now if we wanted to we could also put on the gaunt features on the extra model like this yeah i mean it, it adds a little bit of extra detail makes his lips look drier it's arguably a little bit too clippy i, I think for my taste but uh screw it we, we, we we'll, we'll leave it as it is now of course we want to make use of the extra hair that we have so we could go down and we could slap on this and now boom we the hair would look a lot messier we could also use horns to complement the fact because it looks a little bit weird and awkward here. Or we could simply, I mean, we, we could say this guy's really, you know, just very stylish even on the job. So we'll, 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 we can let him have this hair as well. Now we have two combined hairstyles like this. Now um, with the weapon, again, you don't need double model to stack weapons, but I will, I'll, I'll do it in this case anyway. So we have two different axes stacked up here, remember? So we can change one of them to a simple spear. Let's say we go for the English bill hook, then we can just line up the posing of this one, grip position all the way down like this. Now it's lined up. And you can kind of see what I'm going for here. I'm combining the bill hook with the with the axe to create a kind of pole arm like uh halberd is the is the word I'm looking for. Now if we want to do some more layering, we can go into the extra model. As you as you both as you know, the uh, both of the legs have this weird like upper over what what was it called segmented leg armor here. But what if we want a nice tabard? Then usually we would we would only be able to have this and then nothing else. But because we have these two models, we can have a tabard and the segmented leg armor. But of course now you see the segmented leg armor is no longer pushing away those lower pants, so we can go and we can simply remove those, or if we really wanted to, we could try and get some extra armor instead. However, with such baggy pants, it's very likely to cause some clipping, as you can see. So honestly, I would just remove these legs for now. We have a tabard, we have segmented leg armor, and we have the samurai pants underneath. That is, you know, that is all we need, I think. And now we get to the really juicy stuff. So the main model has this big black art chest piece, right? And I've chosen this one very intentionally. So now we're going to go into the extra model and we are going to remove the black art armor here. And then we are going to slap on underneath the knight banneret tunic. So immediately you can see a lot of clipping here. So what we're going to do is... Actually, before we do anything about the clipping... We are going to smack on the half plate chairs. And yes, a lot of you will know where I'm going with this. This is one of my favorite combinations. And I feel like it, it covers so many bases of double modeling. So no better time to do it than right now. Now, we have a lot of clipping and it looks horrible. So what can we do here? 
Well, the as these gloves that are present on both models right now, they are squeezing down the arm. So the first thing we can do is on the chest on the extra model, which has the night banner and tunic, we can change those gloves to a pair that will not squish down the arms. So we change those to a normal plain gloves. Now immediately the night banner at arms become a little bit more visible. That's one good step. Then we go into the main model and we pull down the arm size and we basically hide those arms. Now, Night Banner Tunic is now way more visible. However, the shoulder bits here that we kind of wanted to be visible are have kind of disappeared. So we're not going to go that far. We're, we'll take it to like 35 or so. And that will do for now. And we still have a little bit of those, those arms showing. So, uh, the chest piece then. Well, on the extra model, which has the Night Banner stuff, we are going to pull down the waist all the way down like this to hide as much of the half plate curse as possible then we're going to pull out the bust to show as much of the upper part of it the torso part because that's the cool part right and then on the main model which has the black card we're gonna pull out the belly like this to about 50 to you know cover up the ugly part part of the half plate curse now you can kind of see where we're going here we're going we're going for a perfect combination of decent armor here cool torso chest plate these big cool arm stuff here and of course the Knight Banneric arm arm guards because that, that's like all the things that we want from a real chest piece, right? So we get the best of, you know, everything. However, this is obviously very fiddly. So we, <laughs> this is a complicated example. This is not the beginner's example that I would really recommend. However, it is, you know, it, it, it if you can learn to do it with this, then you can learn to do it with anything. Now, here's another trick for measurement sliders. You can use the muscularity to impact only certain parts. Right now we want the shoulder part of the, of the black guard armor, but not the arm guard part to be more visible. So we can pull up the muscularity, which will make these shoulders bigger. And it won't really matter too much down here either, because it's only making the segmented leg armor stand out more. So we pull up the muscularity a little bit to like 75 or so. And now we're cutting out most of the clipping from the arms underneath here. And of course it wouldn't be double modeling if we didn't include some shoulder pads. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing now. And this is really, really straightforward. I mean, look, you just you slap on one pair of shoulder pads on the main model and then another pair of shoulder pads on the extra model. And you just pose them accordingly. Now if I were to fill color this, and if I grab this, you know, white steel color and I just slapped it down, as you can see it would only impact the main model, not the extra model, that's because again they have different color mixtures like I mentioned before, and <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know you're thinking this, those shoulder pads might be looking a little bit too much for, you know, like a casual guard unit, but uh, again, I, I'm, I'm, try I'm, trying to, I'm trying to show something here. Now, again, finally, we have the, the, the helmets, of course. I mean, I, I chose to prioritize the face and the hair here because I thought that those tricks were cooler, but now that they're already shown, you know, we can do some kind of cool helmet combination, so let's find something decent. I mean, yeah, sure, why not? Why, 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 why not go for the, for the Viasur with the, with, the, with the Roman helmet or the Spartan helmet or whatever it is? There we go, and then we just monocolor it, then we slap on some blue feather to match with the uh, the tabard down here, and boom, there you go. Perfect double model example. And of, of course, there's like a million different combinations for um, every single piece, so there's no way I can go over everything all at once. But hopefully this video should give you some, some helpful pointers, and above all, just stop using those like pre-made APR poses, because whatever character you want to make, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter what character you want to make but the the, the point is you're, you're gonna be wanting to make your own pose with your own personality and if you if you take someone else's apr just because the two models are already stacked and you don't know how to stack them yourself then you're kind of surrendering to never being able to change the pose at all and that kind of sucks and also it's going to give you real problems like having to put 
on all pieces from the beginning and coloring everything separately, coloring two different characters with skin tones and decals on both of them. It's like, it's a nightmare. Like, just don't do it. Make a character from the ground up, do all the decals, do the base clothing, all the posing, all of that, and then, only then, only after you've done all of that, you import. That's how you do it. Thank you all for watching. If this video was helpful, then please press a like and subscribe. If this video wasn't helpful, then by all means, dislike. Um, you can also join the Discord if uh, if you want to partake in the community or post any of your own creations or your own tips. And you know, if you think that I missed any tips in here, then by all means, throw them in the comments below and I will hopefully be able to address them in a future video. Also, I know this video was a little bit less polished than most of my stuff, and that's because I wanted to get this out quickly while the update is fresh so that people actually can get you know some tips while it's still relevant rather than you know two months from now if, if i drop something super edited but anyway uh until next time goodbye